uh, the month of November is the month of Thanksgiving. And uh, last year during Thanksgiving, or during, during the month of November, we did our series on thankfulness. And we found out that we've got a lot of things to be thankful for, and, and, and we, need to be, we need to be thankful. But this year, I'm going to talk about blessings for the month of, of, Thanksgiving, or the month of, of November. There's a lot of things that we uh, just overlook as blessings and the ways that we are blessed. And uh, today, of course, is our, our day of communion. And uh, when we look at communion in itself and we think about what it represents and how it represents, we, we see that it's the death of Christ <clears throat> and we see that it's the sacrifice of Christ. And that in itself is such a blessing that we can't, uh, we can't even begin. We, we could just... You could talk forever. I can I can preach every Sunday on the blessing that we have uh, just in the death of Christ and and what that means. But uh, we're going to look through this month. We're going to look at what the different blessings that we have. We're going to look at uh, how we how, how God blesses us. Why God blesses us. Why He withholds blessings from us sometimes. Why we are uh, why we are hindered from blessings. There's all kinds of things that we can talk about uh, with blessings, but we're going to look today at a curse, a curse that brought a blessing. And uh, we, 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 uh, you don't think of curses and the blessings together, but, but we all endure a curse. We all were, we, we, mankind had a curse to begin with, and that curse, though, uh, leads us to a blessing. Now, I looked up as we started start talking about blessings. First thing I like to do sometimes when we talk about things like this, I like to look at how it's defined. And Webster's, this kind of surprised me. Webster started out as a Christian. I mean, it, it, it started out as a Christian dictionary. It, it, Mr. Webster was a, was a, a well-known Christian. But under blessing, the definition of blessing, there was nothing that mentioned God. Nothing. Uh, blessing was, was, it was considered, a, a prayer was considered a blessing. Uh, the, uh, the things that the Catholics did, their, their services, they did blessings. But nothing that came from God was considered a blessing in the definitions that came from Webster. Now, if you go to bless, and looked up the definition of bless in Webster's, it did say to confer prosperity or happiness upon. That was the closest definition that I could find under Webster's uh, to, uh, to what a blessing is from God. But I did go to dictionary.com and looked up blessing on dictionary.com, and here's what it said. God's favor... Or protection. That was the number one definition under dictionary.com was God's favor or protection. And uh, I, I like that one. I really did. I, I love to hear that because that's what I think of when I think of a blessing. I think of the fact that God bestows his favor on us and he bestows his protection on us. Now, you got to look at derivatives. You got to look at, at where these words come from, what, what other forms they take. So blessed. We're, we're blessed. So I looked it up. And the number one definition for it was to be made holy and consecrated. So I, could, I took these definitions and I put them together for my own sake. And, and here's what I came out, out with. That uh, God has conferred prosperity on us because he has found favor in us and made us holy. Now, I look at that. that. That's how I define the way that God, the blessings that we get from God is that he for, puts his favor on us. He gives us prosperity because he made us holy. Uh, now, today we start, and I, I want to start with the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham, and we find that, first of all, in Genesis 
chapter 12. And we'll find the blessing of Abraham mentioned several times in the Bible or referred to uh, several times in the Bible. We're going to look at how that has to do with us. Verse 1 of Genesis chapter 12 says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in all the families of the earth, or in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for uh, your words to us, and we thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon Abraham, Lord. And we just, we claim those blessings. We claim those blessings today for ourselves because you promised us uh, throughout your word that you want to bless us as well. And Lord, we just pray that you would uh, speak to us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Now Abraham was the first person we see in the Bible that was promised a blessing. Now we have, we have good people in the Bible before Abraham. We had people in the Bible. Uh, we had Noah. And it says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God, God found favor with Noah. But it does not say that God promised Noah a blessing. It does not say uh, we, we see Enoch. Enoch was probably the first person in the Bible that we see uh, who really found favor with God because it says that he took him because he walked so close with God. What a, what, a, what a blessing in itself to be to it be said of you that you walked with God. I, I can't think of a better thing to be said about me than I walked with God. So much so that God just took him and he never had to face death. But yet we do not see that it mentions that God promised him a blessing. Abraham is the first one that we see that God promised a blessing. He singled him out of all the people on the earth at that time. Now, we know that there was other people at that time that God blessed. Uh, this is along about the same period of time that Job would have lived. Uh, we don't know exactly when he lived. We don't know exactly the years, but we know that it was along about this same time. But out of all the people of the earth at that time, God singled out Abraham and he says, I'm going to bestow my favor upon Abraham. And I'm going to give him a promise. And not just a promise to Abraham. Now, I don't know about you all, but as a parent, I want to provide better for my children than I have. I mean, we all want that. Any, any parent out there, uh, if, if you don't want that for your children, then then you're probably not that great of a parent. <laughs> I hate to put it that way, but that's, that's, that should be our goal as parents. I want to see my kids do better than I did. I want my kids to have it better than I had it. I want my kids to, to, to do more than I did. I want to leave a legacy for my children, and I want them to have even a greater le legacy for my grandchildren than, than I had for my children. I want each generation to be better than, than the last. And I think that that's important for us as parents to want. And we see here that that's what God, God told Abraham, you will be a great nation. Well, we know that uh, pretty much every nation in the Middle East came from Abraham. Uh, and not all of them are blessed. Not all of them are godly nations. Not all of them were nations that God blessed. Why? Because Abraham did not completely follow God. Abra all those other nations that, that came from Abraham came out of Abraham's unfaithfulness. Faith Abraham was known as being faithful uh, in that, that God he, he promised Abraham that he would be a, a father of the nation of Israel the most blessed nation but yet Abraham took it upon himself him and him and Sarah took it upon themselves to, to provide an heir through other means. 
And because of that, uh, some of the, the nations were not blessed. But uh, Abraham, the promise was that, that your descendants will be great. Your descendants will be like the, the sands of the sea, like the stars of the sky. I mean, that was, that was the promise that God left Abraham with. This is what he promised him. But not only that, this is the greatest part. Not only did God promise Abraham that he would be blessed and that God would bless Abraham, here's the great thing is that God promised Abraham that you will be a blessing to others. It's great that God blesses me. I, I love that God blesses me and God has blessed me greatly. But the fact that I get to be a blessing to other people and that I can help other people, that's even more important to me than, than the fact that God blesses me. I like to be able to bless other people and God promised Abraham that. But he also promised him not only that, but the, the, the people who, who are good to you, those people who bless you, those people who help you, those people who help you along as you go in life. <clears throat> now, this is just a commercial here. Be good to your preacher. <laughs> the people who bless you, I will bless them. Amen. Those people who curse you, though, I'll curse them. You see, God made this promise to Abraham. I want to live my life and I want to be in such a way and that, that God blesses me in this way. That those people who, who want to join with me and those people who help me and those people who, who are part of the ministry that I'm part of, God will bless them and bless what they do as well and, and bless our church because, because live your life so that, the, that God blesses wherever you're at. That's what we need to be. That's who we need to be in God. But here's the thing. This was a promise that was made millenniums ago. Thousands of years ago, God made this promise to a man who lived in the Middle East, in the, in the land of Mesopotamia. I always liked that word, Mesopotamia. I remember learning about that in school. Did you know that that is where history has shown that mankind began? Well, I knew that before science figured it out. I knew that before my science teacher told me. You know why? Because that's the area that God said so. That's where, that's where Adam and Eve came from. But anyway, that's where, that's where Abraham came from. So what does that promise of thousands and thousands of years ago have to do with me today? Well, we see again in Genesis chapter 28. Now, this is still to the Jews but in Genesis chapter 28, verse 3, this is Isaac who is talking to Jacob at this time. Now, this is the time when Jacob is leaving uh, the parent, parent, wherever it was that they lived at that time. But Jacob is leaving home, and he is going to the land of Laban. And he's going, to, going over to, to his mother's family to find a wife and he's going to work there and he's going to live there and before he leaves though Isaac pulls him aside now he's already stolen the blessing from Esau and he's already stolen the, the or <clears throat> connived his way around the uh, the birthrights of Esau but here we see that even though he's done all this Isaac still gives him a blessing in Genesis chapter 28 verse 3 says may God almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may be an assembly of peoples and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger which God gave to Abraham. Here we see that, that, that Isaac refers back to the blessing of Abraham. Here he is talking to his son. Here he is talking to Jacob as he's getting ready to leave. Jacob who became Israel, the, the most blessed nation of all time. And here he is before he leaves. Isaac calls upon him and gives him the blessing and says, may the blessing of Abraham be upon you. That is the promise, the blessing of, of, of being fruitful, the blessing of, of great inheritance, the blessing of, of God's favor on you. 
Now we know that Jacob was, was not deserving. His, his, uh, his name meant supplanter. His name meant that he was, he was conniving. He was, he was a backstabber. He was, he was one who, who, uh, who he lied. He, he was cheated. He did everything. And God, but God still blessed him. Don't that give me hope? Amen. I mean, <laughs> am I deserving? Are you deserving of the blessings of God? No, we're not. And neither was Jacob, but yet, but yet Isaac called on this and he said, the blessing of Abraham be upon you. And, and he took this and he, we see that, that Jacob did inherit the blessing of Abraham. We see that, that the land that he went into, the land that, that he had and, and everything that he did, everything that he touched, God blessed and God gave him children. He gave him. He gave him uh, flocks, and he gave him. He gave him riches uh, galore. And, and and God gave blessed Jacob in so many ways. Uh, but the blessings of Abraham were not necessarily monetary blessings. It was. It was. It was spiritual blessings. Is the promise that God gave him the blessings of a great name, the blessings of being being uh, known by God, the blessing of having God's favor on you. And that's what I want. But even though this was still more thousands of years ago, so what does this have to do with us? Now we go to Galatians chapter 3. Now we get into the New Testament. And in Galatians chapter 3, we see this Blessing of Abraham again. And this is where the blessing of Abraham has to do with you and with me. Verse 13 <coughs> says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Amen. Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. This is where the meat comes from. This is where we get down to the fact that I get the blessing of Abraham. I get the promised blessing of Abraham. Because guess what? Now this is a newsflash to some of y'all. I'm not a Jew. I'm a Gentile. I don't know. I, I don't know exactly where my family came from, but it wasn't Israel. Uh, we came. I think we came through the Scottish and Irish, and I, I probably have a little bit of Italian in me. I don't know what all I've got, but what I do know is, is I, I, I'm not a Jew. I don't think I may have some of it in me. I'm a Gentile. I was raised as a Gentile. I was born a Gentile, and I, I'm a Gentile, and, and that means. At one time, being a Gentile was a cursed thing. During, during Jesus' day, when you walked around, if you was a Gentile, you were shunned. You were, you were not welcome. You were not welcome in the temple. You were not welcome in the synagogues. You were not welcome at any of the ceremonies. You, you were not even offered the word of God. You weren't deserving of it. You were, you were dogs. You were, you were like the dogs, and you, you had nothing to do. The Jews didn't have anything to do with you. And it wasn't until we see that Jesus brought it to the Gentiles. And then we see uh, in the book of Acts where, where God sent, um, he sent Peter to the Gentiles, to Cornelius' house. And that's where we see this come from. But Galatians here tells us that we, under the law, had a curse. Now, a lot of people don't, never thought of the law as being a curse. But here's why it's a curse. You will never be saved under the law. You can never have forgiveness of your sin under the law. As a matter of fact, the law, what the law did for you was the law pointed out what your sins were. Even Jesus told the Pharisees, because you do know the law, 
you are more guilty. So the law makes us guilty. The law brings a curse upon us even more so because we have knowledge of the law. We have knowledge of our sin. And therefore, it pointed out your faults. faults and, it, and, it, and it provided for a way through sacrifices that you could simply appease God, but you could not, it did not and could not erase your sin. It could not purify you or cleanse you. That could not be done by the law. So the law actually, as it's written here, it says it was a curse upon you. Now here's the great thing that I see from Galatians chapter 3 was it says that the, the curse that was brought upon me through the law, Jesus took upon himself. Jesus took that curse for me. And because of that, I can see the blessing of Abraham. Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse uh, starting in 23, 22, it says, If a man has committed a sin deserving of death and he is put to death and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain overnight on the tree. That is why, I don't know if any of y'all knew this, but that's why they had to take Jesus down. Not because it was a Sabbath. They had to take Jesus down because, because this scripture tells you that he had to be. If he was hanging on a tree, his body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day so that you do not defile the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. For he who is hanged is accursed of God. So anybody who was hung on a tree, anybody who was hanged on the tree and died in that way, it says was accursed by God. Now it was for those, those who had committed a sin that was deserving of death. Now, Jesus did not commit a sin that was deserving of death. You did. And I did. And everybody, every other person that's ever lived on this earth did. And, and here's why I know that. Because when you go back to the law and you start reading some of the things, we, we, we like to point out people's sin. Well, that sin, that in the law, in the book of Leviticus, it says that if you did this, then, then you should be stoned. And, 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 and all those people, all those people, did you know that it also says that if you dishonor your parents, <coughs> you should be stoned? Has anybody here, anybody ever dishonored your parents? If you say no, then we've got a church full of liars, <laughs> which is deserving of death. <laughs> Because I know everybody here may not, listen, you may, you may be the best son or daughter right now, but you were a teenager at one point. You were. And, and, and listen, here's what I told, what you used to tell my youth. You may have never backtalked your parents. You may have never been ugly to your parents. But if you backtalked your teacher at school, you dishonored your parents. You see, because it comes back on them. The thing is, is we have all committed sin that is deserving of death. Amen. And we all fall to that curse. Jesus, though, who had not committed a sin deserving of death, who had not disobeyed any laws, who was not cursed by the law, became accursed by God on the tree to take on your sin and my sin. And, and by doing so, it says that he, that we can receive the blessing of Abraham. Not because we deserve the blessing of Abraham, but because Jesus took on the curse so that you and I could be blessed. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 says, there is, for, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not work, walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son 
in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You see, we receive the Spirit. That's where our blessing comes from. That, that Spirit, this is the same, uh, now that we have received the Spirit, we're no longer condemned. You see, when we walk by the flesh and we live by the flesh and we, we try to follow after the flesh, we bring nothing on ourselves but condemnation. But Jesus brought blessing on us through the Spirit that we can walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. The flesh is weak. The flesh is sinful. But the Spirit is not. The law couldn't fix it, but the Spirit only can fix it. The Spirit only brings us back to God. Jesus came in the likeness of a sinful flesh. And he took on the, court, on the curse to bring you a great blessing. The blessing is the Spirit of God that came down on the day of Pentecost. That comes and lives within us. The, the Spirit of God that leads us and guides us and draws us and gives us uh, gives us the, the knowledge and the wisdom to go through our days so that, so that we can pass down the blessings of God upon our descendants and that we can share the Word of God. It comes through the Spirit, and the Spirit is the first means of the blessing that we have that came through Jesus Christ because of the curse that He took on for us. This morning, as we come to... We, we, we're getting ready to come to a time of remembrance of when Jesus took on that curse. We come to this, we come to a remembrance, and we're going to remember the time that Jesus was hanged on the tree, the time that Jesus' body was broken, the time that his blood was spilled. I give you an opportunity this morning before we do that. Because the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, 29, that therefore whoever eats of his eats of this bread or drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. This morning before we come to take this remembrance, I want to ask you, have you accepted the blessing of Abraham? Have you accepted the blessing of the Spirit of God? Jesus Christ took on your sin. Jesus Christ took on your curse so that you can have salvation, so that you can have freedom, so that you can have a, 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 a fulfilling life. This morning, we're going to have an invitation before we have our, our Lord's Supper. This morning, if you're here and you have not received that blessing, I'm going to invite you to come. I'm going to invite you to give your heart to Jesus Christ because otherwise, this will be taking eating and drinking to damnation. So this morning, the invitation is if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, <clears throat> Don't take on a greater curse. Allow him to give you a blessing. But if you're here this morning, and you, you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, but you've not been living like a blessed person, you've not been, you've not been, you still feel unworthy because you've not been living your life like you're blessed. This morning, whatever your need is, the altar is open as we stand. Let's turn to page 470.